My name is Marla Asis. I am the Executive Director of the Scalabrini Migration Center based in Manila, the Philippines. And we had this project uh, focusing on Southeast Asian fishermen working on Taiwanese uh, fishing vessels. So the study looks into the situation of uh, Filipino, Indonesian and Vietnamese fishermen who are working on Taiwanese fishing vessels. These are the three largest source countries of foreign fishermen to Taiwan. We decided to focus on um, the issue of uh, migrant fishermen because working in the fishing sector is one of uh, uh, the sectors where uh, workers can be rendered vulnerable because of very difficult working and living conditions. On the fishing vessels, uh, when they go out at sea, uh, there's no definite um, schedule on when they can rest and when are the working hours. So they could work for very, very long hours, particularly when they are at sea. And then when they are also on land, so they could still be doing other work like mending the fish nets or maybe painting the, painting the vessel and doing other repairs. The fishermen who are working on domestic uh, waters are generally better protected because they are protected by Taiwan's Labor Standards, uh, Standards Act. The fishermen who are working on deep sea fishing are the ones that are more vulnerable because they are not covered by the Ministry of Labor. And because of that, um, their, their working conditions do not follow uh, uh, labor standards. If you are a foreign fisherman and you are covered by the Labor Standards Act, then you are entitled to the minimum wage in Taiwan. Fishermen at that time was about the equivalent of $720. But if you are uh, a foreign fisherman and you are working on deep sea fishing, you are not covered by the labor standards, and so the wages that they receive are much lower. We heard, um, we heard monthly wages, for example, in the amount of $400. There are also, um, there, there's the abuse being insulted on a daily basis for mistakes that may not even be their own, uh, may, may, may not even be because of their own errors. Uh, the verbal abuse gets to them very much. The issue of fishermen is something that we need to pay attention to because this is a category of workers that's largely invisible to the public. They are out at sea. The captain is the one that has their fate in their hands. And of course, there's always the possibility that when things go wrong, the worst case scenario is you can be dumped at sea. There have been media reports of uh, deaths uh, that, that have happened. The other thing I think that's quite invisible about um, foreign fishermen is that when we think, for example, of human trafficking, um, the, the, the common perception is that trafficking happens largely to women and children. And that is true. But I think we also need to broaden our understanding of who are the victims of trafficking. And one of them could be uh, one sector that, is, uh, that can be rendered vulnerable to trafficking is uh, the sector on, on, on fishing, particularly those that are engaged in fishing um, on deep sea waters. They are victims of trafficking as well because many, many of the indicators of forced labor and, and trafficking are present in their, in their working conditions. And yes, uh, trafficking also happens to men and particularly in this case, foreign fishermen. One of the recommendations that we have in this particular study is that um, to be able to have more regular inspection and also to have a more independent, uh, maybe source, independent sources of information about uh, the conditions, the working and living conditions, it would be important to involve other, other players, no? maybe la labor unions to come into the picture so that they can also do inspections and why not no? the role of civil society organizations as well different players like the embassies or you know the uh, government representatives of countries of origin should also be sensitized to this particular sector that there's also a need for them to monitor what is happening to their nationals the fishermen that we have interviewed are like other migrants they basically went to taiwan to work on fishing vessels so, they, so that they could find a better life, not only for themselves, but also to improve the welfare of their families. And I think that's something that's quite common among Asian migrants, that their primary motivation is really to improve the lives of their families. Even if they go 
uh, on their own and by themselves. Uh, they always carry with them, you know, the hopes and aspirations of their families. Thank you.